everyone, I'm Christina Klimash and we are at the podcast Building Digital Products, where we speak about the technology that can boost your business here and now. And our today guest is Per Holknecht. He's a Swedish entrepreneur, fashion designer and founder of a flourishing clothing brand on Molly and 30 other businesses. He is also a well-known speaker and consultant on topics related to entrepreneurship, leadership and innovation. Hi, Per. Well, what an introduction. Well, good morning to you. Good morning. How's everything in, in Ukraine? The war is still going on and we need to fight for our freedom. We do everything to support our soldiers. The whole world is on your side. So from us to you, the greatest of power. Thank you so much for your support. So in this interview, we will talk about the intersection of fashion and digital. But I would begin with a question to introduce you to the listeners deeper. About uh -huh. a year ago, you spoke about your life experience in TEDx. You said that you are a kind of a person living out of the box, smoking cigarettes and taking coffee for breakfast, while others listen to Tony Robbins before the gym opens. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to ask you, how did this attitude affect your businesses? Well, to me, it's like this, you know, if, if everybody is being so fucking great and they're equally great, uh, nobody stands out. So in the competition, it's, it's very costly to climb to the top. It takes a lot of effort. And, and, and uh, for me, I have decided to always not reach for the top, but to build my own mountain. Mm -hmm. And I work my own way. So if I can imagine this, we have 40,000 North Korean soldiers marching in a field. And they're all also so uncomfortably perfect, except from one. He cannot keep the beat and he's walking totally out of sync with the 40,000. He is the only person that you will see. And I try to be that person. So if I don't do it like everybody else does it, I will be the one to be seen. And it also means that I don't have to be perfect. Great answer. Thank you. I like your uh, philosophy, honestly. And honestly, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we're all taught to be machines, to develop, to develop, to develop. Sure. And I try to stay as human as possible. And as a human, I have accepted to have my flaws. As to uh, corporate and branding and fashion branding, um, you can connect with your customer if you communicate uh, uh, human ingredients in a brand, such as flaws. Perfection is, uh, is sometimes nothing that bonds people together. It separates people. But if you can uh, dare to be imperfect, you can connect people because people aren't perfect. So branding in fashion to me is, is uh, the skill of communicating human, humankind, not uh, uh, reaching for the impossible. I have lived close to my mother, to my wife and to my daughter, and I, I see how the fashion industry um, grooms women into thinking that they are not good enough. And I, I want to communicate that they are, that you are because you are. But, you know, that, that has, in, in my own history, it, it has worked perfectly fine because it's not complicated. Uh, I, as a human, I, I, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm a loving person. I'm a creative person. I'm, uh, I'm attentive to the needs of others. But I also have my flaws. My self-confidence is not what I want it to be. I, I worry and, and I have my, uh, my issues, such as all of us. Of course, but I think that it's more important to understand these issues and uh, accept them. You know? Yes, and if you can accept this and dare to be open with this, you will connect with other people. Sure. So let's get to fashion and digital. And I would like to share with you one project. Listen, to that is so un <laughs> fashion and digital. They sound so unsexy, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so recently, we had a project which allowed people to create makeup with augmented reality, 
people use their smartphone cameras and the app scans their faces to give them instructions on how to apply perfect makeup. Such AR technology uh -huh. is widely spread in the fashion industry and you know, like people can try on virtual clothes. Uh -huh. And uh, my question is, do you think this digital experience has the potential to replace the need of visiting a retail store? I can only look at things from my own po point of view. Sure. And since I've been in the fashion industry now for over 30 years, I have also became a nerd as to qualities. And qualities to me must match the price and expectation. And and um, retail over the over the digital ways today does not communicate quality. It only uh, communicates uh, visual. Mm -hmm. And from what I really know from inside the industry is that the corporations know this. They understand this, so they can communicate a perfect visual and then deliver a lower quality so they they, they they produce lower quality clothing because the visual on the screen is so perfect so they don't meet the customer's expectations and there we have a problem because you, it all lands in reality when you meet your product and, and your customer and your consumer it has to live up, up to the expectations so i personally have yet not in my life purchased one garment online. Okay. I only go to retail stores and it's not only because I'm old, but it's because I'm, I'm interested in quality and I want to meet my product. I want to interact with my product. But as we are moving towards uh, digital sales, and, and that is the main factor today, mm -hmm. we have to accept this. And in this uh, sense, uh, I welcome it, but we have to bring with us the fact that uh, we cannot fool our customer over over the screen. We have to be honest and honestly sells and honestly and honesty builds customer relations and customer relations build corporations. If you win a customer, you keep a customer. If you win a customer, you can also lose your customer. So you have to understand that the the, the the business deal is not made when a customer clicks on buy. The business deal happens when the customer opens the box. So you have to move it in that direction. You, you, you got to deliver. I would like to add like one information, you know, like we live in a COVID reality lift and now it's a full scale war in Ukraine and we need sometimes to shop online and to integrate this digital experience to uh, more understand what suits uh, uh, for us and what not. And I would like to share like with you one more example with Ukrainian uh, clothing platform which named Dress X, they raised the $15 million in March 2023. They have their unique feature, which allows users to upload their photo to try on 3D clothing model, model before deciding to buy. And one reason yeah. for implementing this technology is for sustainability. And because the fashion industry is considered as one of the biggest polluters in the world, according to the UN Conference on Trade and Development. And um, mm -hmm. do you think modern technology can help the fashion industry become more, more sustainable and eco-friendly? That's, that's a very good question. And that, that boils down to human control. You know, you gotta, I, 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 I don't think that, uh, I mean, sustainability to me is not a word. It's something you do. And, mm -hmm. and, and um, words we can, we can make over the computer, but doing is also down to human hands. Because what happens when you produce in a factory, uh, you, you um, the, the the normal chain of uh, of how it works is that you got to have a person there to to check production, and and because you have to get international certificates of of sustainable uh, production, so we 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 can't we cannot, in my world, digitally get away from the human control over factories. We, I, I, I cannot have chat GPT walk into a factory in Pakistan and, and check how the children are treated when they make the shoes. Sure. So, but we can use the fast ways of communicating uh, digitally to, 
to um, implement and, and faster uh, uh, organized control. But, but it's down to, in, in the end, it's down to, to uh, human beings uh, uh, because some of the bigger chains today, you know, uh, they still work with, with uh, doubtful production. And to me, sustainability, once more, it, it isn't a word that we communicate to sell things. It's something we, we do to make the world better. I agree with you totally. Uh, when you work on Odd Molly and others' e-commerce projects, how deeply you are involved with tech teams? You know, when I started Odd Molly in 2002, we weren't uh, tech at all. Uh, it, it wasn't until maybe seven years later that we opened our own web shop. And back in those days, I mean, having a web shop, it was basically to make a website. And, and, and we didn't have the today's ways of, of, of building uh, communities or whatever. Uh, we had Facebook and we could build a community there. But I mean, it was it was way simpler, you know. Uh, and that is a, that, that's an issue for me today because I personally, um, I've had a... Since my experience in the old trading system is so big, now that it has moved into the modern um, ways of, of, of doing business, I have not really kept up to par. I promised myself two years ago to never again go back into the fashion industry because I'm not good enough. And I don't know the new, the new ways of trading. Uh, now I... I was asked six months ago to to go into fashion again, and of course I couldn't say no. But now it was. Have you ever heard of a company called Foodora? Not. No, they deliver no. food from restaurants home to to people's homes. Mm -hmm. uh, they have hundreds of thousands of employees, and and uh, they asked me to come up with sustainable solutions for their brand and for their deliveries. So I am now designing their collections for all their writers in, in Europe. And, and I'm also coming up with a recycle system for their old uh, garments to, to be reproduced into new garments. Uh, so we don't throw away things. So we don't do like Louis Vuitton, who uh, once a year they go into the desert and burn everything that didn't sell. Oh, oh I they did do. I didn't know it. Oh, yeah. So, so to, that that's to me is you know it's 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 a fashionable brand, but it, it's kind of a, uh, dirty in my world. Um, now I forgot your question. I just keep on talking. <laughs> I just asked you about your collaboration with tech teams or tech companies. Yeah, it's like this. You have to understand your own shortcomings. I know what I'm good at, and and when building a brand, when building a company, you have to sort of make a recipe for how to to serve this dish and you need the following ingredients and and once you have written your recipe for how you want to bring this brand to the world or or, or keep on developing this brand in the world you you have to understand what you're good at and you also even more importantly have to have to understand what you're bad at and and so what i do as to tech since i'm i'm i'm, I'm a fairly old guy i ask for help and this is a problem for many, many corporations today because you have leadership, you have a board that is fairly old and they're normally men, unfortunately, and men are very proud. Men hate to admit that they don't understand, that they don't know. And there's a huge risk in these old men in their old suits that they pretend to understand and make bad decisions instead of asking for help from a more knowledgeable generation. So my, my secret recipe to, to uh, being perfect is to just ask for help. It's great, you know, like because you can't be proficient in everything. You need to be no. uh, good at your, you know, like um, qualification or what you are good at. And uh, when you need like to di digitalize your business, you need to ask like for help for someone who, yeah. is, re who is expert in this field. You know? And you know what, women, you, I envy you women because you are great <laughs> at asking for help. You yeah. don't have the, self, the same pride as men do. Men hate to admit that they don't know. So they pretend to understand and they make horrible, horrible decisions. That's why I always prefer to work with women because <laughs> you are so open and so ready to develop. And whilst men are more like 
static. Oh, so now I played that guitar. I don't know. Um, but it, <laughs> that's why, I mean, you know, Molly, you know, there were, we were 80 people. I started the company together with my friend Cotton, who unfortunately died last year. Uh, we were 80 people and, and uh, 78 women and two guys. That's how I recruit people because I love working with women. <laughs> and, and, and my assistant, after seven years, I trained her to be so fantastic that I figured that she was better than me. <laughs> so I, 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 I called everybody together one day and I said, you know, from today and on, Jenny is your boss and Jenny is my boss. So if you can sort of allow other people to grow, you will grow together. Totally. I think that the same is with mentorship. When you mentor someone, yeah, it's like the same on your job and you just like revise all you know and try to be a good leader, a good boss to this person and you grow with this person also. And uh, yeah, please. I mean, I mean, isn't it the greatest if you can teach someone to be better than yourself? What a, what a fantastic achievement. I yeah. mean, that is the greatest of goals. Because they say that, you know, one person is strong, but I say teams are strong. If you can work together as a team where everybody is one's, we, imagine you and I have make a little team and we start a business together. My job is to make you fantastic. Your job is to make me fantastic. And if we work the same way with greater teams, then we'll all become fantastic, even though we're not, because we're just little humans, but we will become fantastic together. And that is me taking this far away from tech, but I mean. <laughs> yeah, I think that working together, you can do more than working alone. To co collaborate, yeah. brainstorm, and sharing all the ideas that you can implement together. But, you know, when you, I just want to touch, touch the word brainstorm for a moment. Um, you know, a, a, a word that um, creative people hate? Brainstorm? Brainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because creative people, they don't, they don't go to brainstorms. They have their brainstorms. <laughs> All the time? No, um, no. I, I cannot turn my head off, no. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. Two days ago, I, I, I read on LinkedIn, a, a new man had been assigned the CEO for the Swedish Postal Service. It's a huge company gigantic company and he went on linkedin and he said i am now the new blah 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 and and uh as you may well understand due to digitalization uh the 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 distribution of letters and postcards has been uh, dropping dramatically mm -hmm. and my task is now to to bring back the great business that we once were and i was like wait a second i can help you so i gave myself the freedom to write this man and I said, I can help you uh, do your job. You're new on your job. And when you're new on your job, you're ready to change. If you're old on your job, you're not ready for change because then you have to, 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 to um, defend your own bad decisions, mm -hmm. but you're new on your job. So, so I said, how about if I come see you? That was two days ago. Yesterday, he and I sat down for three hours. Two hours later, we had signed the contract for me to go into the Swedish Postal Service to help this gentleman bring back the business that they once were. And I have the secret recipe. I love this. This gives me hope, you know. And to tell you the truth, I don't think that I'm smart. I don't think that I'm a genius. I'm a little guy from the countryside who just thinks a lot. And I do a lot. And when I think something, I make it and I do it. And I want to bring this to everybody who's listening. Never, never underestimate yourself because you're so fucking much better than what you think you are. Don't let other people limit you. Stop yourself from comparing yourself to others. Because once you do, you will make others giants and yourself little. Sure. Yeah. So, so, so understand the possibilities of being imperfect. Because if you're perfect, you're just marching like everybody else. <laughs> Use your perfections in branding yourself, in branding your fashion business, in branding your designs, make it not so fucking perfect because perfect is provocative. 
it isn't attractive. I think that imperfect it's uh, our uniqueness. Something that isn't it is, beautiful. Yeah, I think that it's very beautiful. Yeah, and and when I started out Maui, I, I had two little sentences that I worked with. One was perfect defect, and and the other one was you are perfect only because you are not. And mm -hmm. and those were my two 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 cornerstones when I built the brand, and I take you know I, I took that using those words and and the little oddities of humans and and I, in five years I had thirty thousand euros to bring to to build the company and in five years it was worth one hundred twenty five million euros just being not perfect and so don't aim to be better than everybody else aim to be different from everybody else. It's much cheaper and it's so much more fun. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Now we're talking branding, which is my favorite subject, of course, as I'm <laughs> trying to pretend like I know tech, which I don't really do. Yeah, but you have, you know, like your experience with the tech team as a fashion designer and it can be useful for our listeners and yeah. for everyone. And well, mm -hmm. let me give you an example. I have a friend of mine. His name is Adam. He started a company, uh, Cheap Monday and, and Monkey and Weekdays. It was a big company. And, and he, he's a guy just like me from the countryside, you know. And, and then he sold his company uh, to uh, H&M for uh, 68 million euros, I think, in, in 2000. And was it for 14, I think? Mm -hmm. and, and then he moved to uh, Firenze or to Florence in it Italy. Um, and he had five years where he could no more, no longer do, he was locked. He, he was forbidden from competing within the fashion industry for five years by contract. That's normal. If you sell your, your fashion company to another fashion company, they will stop you from competing. Once he got out of lock, he said, I am now going back into the fashion industry, but I built my last company on the old analog uh, corporate ways. Now, suddenly, after a five-year lapse, I'm starting a new company in the new digital, digi digitalized world. And he said, the only way for me to go forward now is to burn everything that I have learned. Yeah. Everything that I know, I have to burn it and start all over, start from the beginning. So he started a company in, in Firenze or Florence named AV, AV, AV Firenze. And two years later, being so bright that he, he simply burned his own experience, got rid of it and started over. He was uh, named or, or, or he won the prize for a fashion startup brand of the year in Italy in both Elle magazine and Vogue magazine. So you have to sort of now as time progresses and 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 uh, everything is speeding faster and faster and faster. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning will not be like today's morning. You have to always sort of burn the old and go into the new every morning, and it's going faster and faster and faster. So so. Um, in order to keep tech, you have to fucking be dedicated to tech. And 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 if you're not, find somebody who is and marry them. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned H&M. And I have uh -huh. also like one more case with H&M. Uh, so in 2018, H&M partnered with the Swedish fintech company Klarna. Yeah, they integrated physical and online H&M shops by combining AI, big data and machine learning to understand more customer preferences, to improve the mm -hmm. supply chain and make more personalized marketing. And uh, what do you think about these innovative abilities for fashion companies? Well, you know, it doesn't really matter what I think. You have to <laughs> embrace it. I, I may not be a friend of the development, but if, if, if I make development my, 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 my enemy, I'm going to be the loser. I have to embrace it, hold it, and make it my friend, and use and make the best of it. And Because if it's my enemy, I'm going to fight it, and it's going to take me down. Sure. Because I think new reality demands new, you know, like technologies, new approach for businesses and for everything. Yeah. But, you know, I, I'm so old that the, the, there once was a day where I um, where the telefax was introduced, 
you know, the fax machine was introduced and, and that was so high tech that people were fighting the telefax because we don't want to go this far in development. And today the telefax is like fucking smoke signals, you know, it, it's, it's <laughs> like, <clears throat> so I, I say embrace the new, use the new, but for God's sake, use it for the better, not for the worse, because, you know, they're talking like nuclear weapons is not the new threat. It's AI. It's you know all, all the all the artificial intelligence. That's the new enemy of society because they can shut down a hospital tomorrow if they want to, and, and uh, so we have to be careful, but embrace it and be part of it because if we're not a part of it, we can't change it for the better. And my last technical question is: uh, even the fashion business, however creative it may be, is still business, and uh, you know it requires operational management. And do you have uh, experience with automating your businesses? You mean so, so, a self-running business that does everything? No, like that you need to, that you can uh, automate uh, some processes and um, waste lack of time on this. N not personally, but you know, I buy services. Um, if I want to develop an app, I don't sit down and develop the app. I, I, I search for the best possible app maker for me, and they will probably uh, use uh, that. But it's it's not within my framework. But you know, personally, I try to keep organizations as, as the fixed cost of a company. My when I build businesses, I, I try to keep fixed cost at, at, at a minimum and uh, flexible cost as a, at a maximum because it makes me less vulnerable for, for, for changes in the market. So I buy services from the outside. I buy consultants. I, I If I have a company that turns over a hundred million euro, I still want it to just be three people. And the, and the rest are just services that I buy that are flexible. So, so they they may use all the, you know, all the tools for, for automation. As I understood you correctly, you sometimes buy services from other co uh, countries or you... Companies, companies. Co uh, companies. Oh, I just yeah. thought about <laughs> countries that you, you know, like... Uh, well, if I buy production of a, of a knitted sweater, I need to go to Hong Kong or I need to go to Morocco. So it'll be, uh, you know, automatically different countries. But... Um, I go through I go through agents, I go through consultants, I go through uh, I have over my years I've built such a tremendous network of people that can make anything that I want to happen happen. So I, I have all the tools and that's the, that's a great part of, of age is that I have built a network of a toolbox of things that I, that I can use to build anything I want. But uh, I don't want a big company to be a lot of people. I have a friend of mine, he's a CEO for uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Minecraft. You know Minecraft? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Jonas, he's the CEO for Minecraft. Uh, they turn about, you know, 1 billion euros today. And they're 14 people. Great team make uh, can make great results. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, I'm sure that there's a couple of thousand people around that that are not included within the business. Yeah. But he's buying everything from the outside. So he's keeping the core little and the rest flexible. And that is a suggestion in, in a really fast changing world today. Because like I said earlier, you know, you don't know what's going to, what it's going to be like tomorrow morning. It's for sure not going to be like it was today. And I would like to ask you, you know, like more personal question about your hobby. I saw that you play pinball and you yeah. even participated in the world champions. And why, oh, all the time. <laughs> why is this game, you know? It's like this. If you like, like me, I you know I have two uh, beautiful daughters. I live by myself. Uh, life is serious on that end of life. I have to you know really really perform well with my children, and I have responsibilities within my different companies. I also need to disconnect myself from all the serious parts of life. I need to play. I need to have fun. I need me time. So I have three hobbies of my life. Pin competitive pinball is one. I fly small airplanes. And I, I sports fish, and 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 if I have those, I get the, the the nourishment to to be strong for those that need me in the serious parts of life. So pinball is is a great hobby. And what it's about skateboarding? 
Well, my body is too broken. You know, I was Sweden's first professional skateboarder uh, for many years um, in California. And uh, oh. my body, I just broke in too many bones and my, I had back surgery and my shoulder surgery and knee surgery. And I broke in this seven times, that five times. And so I, I can't skate anymore. I'm a skater in, in my head. Yeah, sometimes uh, we need like to know um, to change our hobbies, but uh, I think that we can replace it with something new. Like, you know, when you don't uh, get away from something uh, old, you wouldn't open the doors for something new that, ca that can be better and more interesting. And, you know, th that would be my, my, my final advice to you as a young, beautiful woman, is to uh, allow life to, to change, to sometimes let go of things that you partly love to experience new things of life, um, careers. I mean, my, 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 my oldest daughter, she's, she, she graduated with the highest degrees from the Uppsala University of Economics. And she went into the business field and she, she was headhunted and recruited and she was earning, you know, 8,500 euros a month at the age of 23. And then she came home one day and she said to me, Dad, uh, I think I've chosen the wrong path of life. I don't want to do a economics. And I said, so what do you want to do? She says, uh, I want to have a bakery. So she let go of all of her education, her fantastically high paid job to start her own little bakery. And she did. And I said, sure, baby, you're going to have your little bakery. You know, strive to be happy. So, so, so dare to, you know, let life uh, bring you surprises and don't deny the possibilities that are up ahead. It is really inspiring, honestly. I think yeah. that we need like to share these stories to our friends who, you know, like are afraid of the changes and we need to remind them that they uh, can do everything they want to and don't limit yourself. And you know what? And, and this goes out, especially to you people in Ukraine. Because I know that a lot of people live in darkness and hopelessness and, and uh, despair. Um, believe, in, believe in the light. Believe in the light. Stay afloat. Stay awake. Hang in there. Um, there is something better up around the corner. And, and uh, uh, don't give up. I, I've, I've lived in, in, in uh, close to suicidal thoughts many times of my life when I was homeless. And uh, at times I, w I was so ready to give up. And today when I look back at those days, I'm so happy that I, that I decided not to. So hang in there, uh, keep the faith and uh, people love you. Thank you, Per. Thank you for your support and for support Ukraine. It's very, you know, like um, important for us to understand that uh, people all over the world uh, is uh, with us and uh, are praying for our win. And now uh, a final uh, suggestion to, uh, uh, no, uh, 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 advice to the listeners that are in a way corporate. I was contacted uh, about three and a half years ago by a gigantic Swedish consultant company with 24 offices in the country, thousands of employees. And the CEO contacted me and he said, I need you to come to my office. I have to talk to you. So I go to his place and, and we sit down and we talk and he talks about tech and he talks about tech. And I say to him, you know, I just want you to understand that I am most likely Sweden's uh, worst person as to tech. You have, you're talking to the absolutely wrong person. I am the, the, the least technical person you will ever meet, I said to him. And he said, that's why you're here. Because when we talk to our customers who are normally old people or not so young people, they sit there and they try to pretend that they understand what we're trying to sell to them. But we lost them at the first abbreviation because we talk tech to our customers. Our customers don't understand our language. So he said to me, I need you within my company to translate to people that don't, un that don't understand what we do. And then he said to me, um, Go home and think. I went home and I thought for a while and I said to him, I'm interested. I'm, I'll come to you and I, I will help you uh, communicate your complex product to less complex people. And he said, but I don't know what kind of position to, to give you within my company. And I said, give it a thought. Two days later, he called me and he said, I need, I, 
I know I now I now know what job I want to offer you within our company. He said, "You're going to have my job. <laughs> I want you as the CEO of my company." And you worked as a CEO? No, I I I, I denied his offer. But understand that when you talk tech and when you talk ChatGPT, AI, machine learning, and whatnot, your customers normally don't understand jack shit about what you're talking about. Sure. To try to translate into their understanding. Yeah, we have also, you life. know, like technical customers, but we also have non-technical customers, and we need yes. to um, like build friendship and trust relationship with everyone and uh, communicate our services very clearly for them. Talk to children in children's language. <laughs> yeah, sure. So. All right. Thank you for this podcast. It was really interesting and inspiring to talk to you, with you, and thank you for your thoughts. And uh, it probably didn't go the way you expected it to, but that's okay. And I hope one day I can buy you a cup of coffee. <laughs> sure. So uh, it was Per Holknecht, Swedish entrepreneur and designer, and me, Christina Klimas, business development manager at LinkUp Studio. Hit the like and subscribe button to not skip the following episodes. Bye.